Am I a moron? I'm not an expert at making music. I have no professional experience. I don't own a keyboard and only use free online instruments. I don't even really know music theory. I just click around until I think something sounds fine. That being said, it has always been my dream to make music for a game, and today my dream was realized. My friends Habu and Tyler coded a mod for a farming game called Stardew Valley that adds eight bosses to the game, and none of them have their own theme music. So I reached out to them and I was like, uh, can I make songs for the bosses? And they said no. I'm kidding, they let me do it. So come along as we make boss themes for all the colorful characters in this game who consistently kick my ass until I get angry and log off. Today we'll be making music for He. His name is Ark, he's a skeleton mage, and given how iconic boss themes for skeletons can be, I feel kind of pressured to do a good job here. Well, enough talk and let's get to it. This is how I made Gelus Defensor, Ark's theme. gang here we are so this is my second attempt at recording this because i recorded the whole thing and then went into premiere to edit it and realized that my microphone was set to the absolute maximum volume setting because i had bumped my little dial and i was basically just screaming at everyone so i've got practice and i should be an absolute expert at this and explain my process flawlessly <coughs> All right, well, first things first uh it's been a while since i've done one of these and that was not of my own choice i have just spent months on this specific song because I just for my life could not get something I was happy with everything sounded bad everything sounded off I'm still not 100% happy with this I still think it doesn't sound right I still think it's missing something and I don't know what but I'm tired so this is gonna be what I rock with as is customary the quick disclaimer that I am not an expert I don't really know what I'm doing I just mess around with this for fun I promise you I'm aware that a lot of the stuff I'm doing doesn't sound good or is missing something or I'm doing it inefficiently as you can tell by this jumble of whatever this means I forget I'm just kind of having fun here so I'm by no means claiming to be good at any of this so right off the bat you might notice something a little peculiar going on and here's the deal i kind of wanted my first foray into the world of audio sampling because this is for a skeleton boss and i feel like skeletons i don't know why but i feel like they're always super like flamboyant and theatric i don't know whose decision that was i don't know who was the first person to look at a corpse and be like no, oh, this guy's got an attitude on him. But I want this song to have a lot of character and be pretty unique. So I looked up Skeleton on YouTube, and I found this video of Skeletor, who's this very famous cartoon skeleton character that I've seen a million times that was clearly before my time. I think it's from He-Man. I could be wrong, though. And it's just this audio clip of him saying what. Of him going, what? Princess Adora. What? And it, I, I don't know. YouTube showed it to me, and I was like, huh. <laughs> That's stupid. I'm gonna use that. So then I had the idea to turn his what right here, this little section of audio, uh, turn that into an instrument. And so what I did is I opened it in an audio player and I just looped a tiny fragment of him saying what. And it makes this noise if you loop it. We have an instrument. Obviously, if you hear it in a vacuum, there's literally no way no one would hear that and be like, oh, that's from uh, Skeletor. Say, like no one, but I know. And that's all I care about. So now I have an instrument so I can throw down like a basic pattern, which is what I did. So this is what we've got. Look at that. Very fun. So then I wanted I wanted to have at the beginning of the song, I wanted to play the original audio for a second and then have the what kind of go into the instrument. Like have that little bit right here, the what, and then it kind of snaps into a, into a note. So that's what I did. And to get this section, I just played the audio, but... If you can tell from the original audio, there's some music in the background. Princess Adora. What? And you can kind of hear the, that, that like bass guitar like leaking through. And man, if only I had a way to remove this background music from this sample. God, it would just be so awesome if like a sponsor of this video could like help me out with that. I feel like that would be super helpful. Lalal.ai. So lalal.ai is a voice cleaning service. And basically what that does is if you put in an audio clip with say like vocals over music, it'll process it and then it'll spit out two separate tracks. One that has just the vocals and one that has just the backing track. So it's good if you wanna make like acoustic versions of songs. So I'm just in here to show you how unbelievably easy this process is. Look at this, it's been like three seconds. I just went to the website and it's doing this for me something that would have taken me ages to do and this is what it gave me it's se separated it into voice and noise so now i have just the voice Princess Adora. 
Look at that. Music is gone. And then I have, if I wanted just the noise, it's done that for me too. And this is free. Like that's, that's wild. I'll have a link in my description where you can head right over if you need any of these services. It's as, as I've demonstrated, very fast and easy to do. And they've got this referral program going on. If you recommend it to a friend, you get extra minutes for free before you gotta buy something. It's just, it's good all around, man. It's a lot of good. So yeah, just run down to my description if you wanna check it out and let's get back to the beats. So now I've got this. Princess Adora. Original audio. First thing I'm gonna do, I want it to sound like it's, like, I want it to sound deliberately lo-fi, like it's going through a CRT TV. So I cut off all the frequencies except, like, the middle, which makes it sound like this. You hear how that makes it? Princess. Princess. Sounds like it's coming out of, like, a shitty speaker. And then I added this plugin that I love, Cymatics Origin. It's free, and it gives you, like, a like a VHS kind of reel-to-reel -reel effect. So, and I made that fade out, so it sounds like... Princess. You kind of hear that, how there's like that, that VHS crackle that fades away. Fun, fun stuff. Okay, oh my God. I realized when I was watching back, when I was editing last video, how many times I said fun over the course of that recording. So I'm gonna try and limit my use of the word fun from here on out, okay? I promise, I'll do my best. So now I need something to go with this, because I'm, I'm not just gonna leave it at this. I could, and that could be funny, of course, but I kind of want something like that's really establishing what key this song is in or what the chord progression is. So I added what is the pretty much the first instrument you think of when you think of skeleton and that is a xylophone. Now, if that ain't a xylophone right there, there's one thing I want to change here. I am all about experimentation. And as just like a haha -ha what if moment, I put the bit crushing plugin that I absolutely waterboarded the dragon song with. I put this on the xylophone and I was like, this is probably gonna sound terrible. I don't think this is really what this is meant for, but this is what it sounds like. I know that might be controversial, but I actually really love that sound, especially because on the low notes, you can kind of hear it's almost making like a bongo drum noise. And I really like it. And then we're just gonna repeat the same thing, except we're gonna add in some more the second time because that's how we roll. And I just, on this like little synth thing I created, I added these little bass notes right there. So it sounds like this. And then that's leading up to our next section. And then in the xylophone, I just added a few more notes. So now we're gonna bring in a couple more things here on the second run through. And the first thing I'm gonna bring in is I'm gonna bring in an actual xylophone without bit crushing. So it sounds like this. And I'm sure you heard there. I also, I made this one little sound bit that I'm using as a transition point for a lot of this song where I just slapped a piano chord down and then reversed it. <laughs> so it sounds like this. Pretty cool effect. I really like it. It's kind of spooky too. And, and and this is the thing I had the hardest time was that I wanted to balance like a kind of a stereotypically cartoonishly spooky feel because it's a skeleton while also making it like fun and have a lot of character. Because this man, he wears many hats. Not only is he a skeleton, but he also does magic. I guess that's the only hat he wears. I guess he just really does magic and that's it. Don't invalidate my struggles. Okay, it was hard. Then I added this little bass bit. And that was just to kind of bring in some bass presence. So now, it sounds like this. Princess Adora. And that's gearing up for our next section. And something that I played around a lot with in this song was build-ups to like disappointing, disappointment pretty much. I want to disappoint you. I want you to like listen to the song and then be like, damn, that sucked. So the first example of this is all of this stuff building up to pretty much nothing. And then it's going to all just, and it's going to be just this piano. And this is what this piano sounds like. I wish I could explain theory wise what I'm doing here. Can't though. I don't know enough music theory to do that. I just threw notes down in a way that I thought sounded fine. But yeah, like this chord progression right here is a pretty like common spooky progression. 
Like, I feel like this is kind of everywhere around the Halloween time. And then it's gonna go into this more intense section that's a lot louder. So it sounds like this all together. And then it's gonna lead into when shit actually starts happening. So now it's a matter of what effects am I gonna put? It's very muted, it's very muted. So the first thing I did was add this that cuts the low end and raises the high end a little bit. And then I added this effect, totally jacks up only the middle frequencies and makes it have that like lo-fi speaker sound from before. But this effect, but this effect is gonna fade out. See that? like it, it's fading out and then here it's it's it sounds much nicer and then to match that i added another equalizer that comes in and this one is just like go wacky with the high end we want this to cut through everything right here at this like pseudo drop deal we're gonna add some new elements first thing i added was this little like white noise riser that i like to add and then another one right before the next section. Next thing were these crash symbols. They're free. <laughs> Actually, no, they're not. Apparently this, whatever this is, Kashmir. The, the, I, I, it's a drum pack that I got from an unknown source. I must've gotten it when I first got FL Studio. And apparently it does cost money. So I, I spent money on these without knowing. So oops, but there are plenty of crash symbols that are free, including just in the like basic packs. It's probably fine. This is just the one that was closest to my mouse, so I clicked on it and dragged it in. Next thing I wanted to add was I wanted to turn that instrument that we made out of the Skeletor voice clip into chords that sound like this. Pretty much playing the exact same notes as the piano. When it's layered, you can't hear it especially well, but it's there. You can find it if you look hard enough. Now we're just gonna add a few basses, and this is the more normal bass. Fun. And then, damn it, don't say fun, don't say fun. Cool, radical, awesome, f stupendous, miraculous, unbelievable, stunning, gorgeous. And then I added this fun, oh my god. Damn it! And then I added this cool, kinda different bass that sounds like, it's like gurgly. It's like a bullfrog. That instrument right there that you're hearing right now is never used a single other time <laughs> in this song. And then the last thing, and this is what really brings it all together, is the return, the triumphant return of the shitty fake chorus from the dragon song. So fake. And it's playing the same thing, same thing as the piano, except here it breaks into just long held notes. So all together. And then we're gonna go into the next section. And let's talk about that next section. First things first, kick drum. I decided to, to not try and reinvent the wheel here. So I just made the exact same kick I made in the dragon song, which is, it's just a normal kick, which is this, that I absolutely obliterated with bit crushing to make it sound like this. And I know a lot of people really don't like this sound. Um, it's, it's, a lot of people think it's too harsh. And I get it. And I know it has that little tail at the end where it kind of makes like a, psh, like a little staticky bit. I like that. I like that effect. And I don't know if that's just me, but I really like this kick sound i think it's cool and i think it's high energy and, and i just had to like physically hold myself back from saying fun again next thing i added was uh just a bass line made from that uh skeletor what sound we made earlier and this settles us nicely into our new key. Well, I guess it's the same key as before, but like our new kind of like pattern, our new chord progression is a better way to say it. And then the last thing that this section has, it's very, it's only three things. We're, we're keeping it pretty bare for now. Is this like high energy bass section made from like a fake guitar strummed constantly that sounds like this. And it, it brings a lot of much needed bass presence to the deal. And this just has a tiny bit of equalizing, not that much. And then studio, nope, stereo enhancer to make it go into both the ears instead of just being in the front. So now this is what we've got. And then 
right here. We're, we're getting rid of this drum for a second and we're building up to a chord modulation that's gonna sound like this. Or key modulation is what I meant. It goes up. We, 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 we went up a little bit. We transposed. I don't know if that's the right word. I don't, again, don't know music theory, everyone. I'm doing my best here. So now we're up. We're uppies. And then we're gonna go back down. And you might have noticed that I made this bass a little more serious now by putting an octave in instead of just the one note. Very exciting. And then I added hi-hats, which is this. And that's just a hi-hat. That again, I rocked with bit crushing because without it, it sounds like this. But now it's this. Wild. And then we're gonna go back down into our familiar territory here. So now we're back down. And let's, you know what, before we bring in our lead, let's do a tiny bit of drum, playing around with drums. I, I couldn't get like, like a consistent like snare or clap to work with this song and to work with this rhythm. So instead, I'm just putting in two claps to occasionally. And I think it makes it funnier. Like, nothing. Just every once in a while. Clap, clap. <laughs> and I think, it, I think it's fun. I think it sounds like he's kind of being cheered on. It's cute. And I also added these weird little like, I don't know what the hell this is. It's like a it's like a shitty clap. It it sounds like it sounds like you're smacking someone across the face with a hot dog. You know what I mean? Like, can you pass the hot dogs? Sorry, didn't mean to throw it. You know what I mean? Forget it. I'm just doing my best here. And and that just provides a a tiny drum presence right there. It's 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 a little understated. Now let's bring in the lead, y'all. And to do this, I'm just gonna use, this is a sawtooth wave. This isn't even really an instrument. I just used a sawtooth wave synth that sounds like this. Very grating. The long notes such as this sound less grating if you add this, which is me wiggling the pitch around to make it go like and kind of shake a little bit. So now it goes from like, Grandpa's flatlining, Grandpa's flatlining to, ooh, Grandpa's like breaking it down. <laughs> okay. All I did for the the lead is really simple. This is this is the the key rhythm that is repeated throughout a lot of this song. Is this right here? That's it. That's kind of the whatever. It's a motif. And then these little. That just provides some flavor, because otherwise, listen to the song without these here. Listen to the song without these. It feels like it's aching for something. And what it's aching for is these little glitter notes that make it sound like this. And then that's building up to this tiny little like, oh, a lot of stuff's happening section. Whoa, whoa. And then it's gonna break into this back to pretty sparse. And this is what this section is. I'm gonna play it first and then I'll like break everything down. So this part is just the same exact same xylophone from the beginning of the song. Same pattern, same everything. I just thought it fit really nicely here because I really like this little diss snippet at the end. This note right here. How it, it kind of like, it, it, it is opposing to the rest of the song. And I think it's a fun bit of dissonance. First thing I added was this right here, which is just more shitty fake chorus. I'm just gonna rename this file to shitty fake chorus because that's always what I call it. And then I also added this, which is just, you can barely hear it because it gets drowned out by everything else, but it's there. And we really just barely hit that last note. So I think it's funny too. Again, we're working off of disappointment here. So it's like building up with these really long notes and then just boop, it's gone. And I added these. These are, I had to download a, <laughs> I had to download a Christmas pack to get these. They're Christmas bells. And something cool about the Christmas bells you hear that? That ringing that you hear in your ears stays around for about a minute and a half before it's fully gone. It stays ringing for so long. Like even right now, you probably can't hear it, but it's still there. 
like the the presence is still there it's it's still ringing a little bit that is unbelievable so what i had to do to counter this is bring this like volume automator in here and just say okay no bells at all until this one brief moment until you get to the end and you're done you're done bells are done no more bells because otherwise without this it'll keep ringing throughout the song like you hear that it's still freaking there so i have to turn on this curve to say like hey shut up and then i just added another little bit of wiggle to the last note that's it and then I just repeated the same thing again except I'm adding a new thing which is right here good old pattern 57 and what this sounds like is it's a square wave so it's a different kind of wave and it's just gonna provide a little harmony to our lead and now with our new harmony it sounds like this building up to something that will get too soon and if you've if you've understood the pattern yet you'll know that it'll probably be disappointing and then yeah this is the exact same as the section from before except now it goes up on the second note because last time it went ba, 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 and this time it goes ba, 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 ba. i just nailed those high notes didn't i freaking savant over here and then for this end section that's building up i just added this in here which is a symbol, but backward. The freaking Christmas bells, dude. And then that's gonna build up to our next section. And I'm gonna introduce our next section with this set of chords. This is the first thing I made when I wanted to make a B section because for some reason this felt like the natural progression from the A section. And this is what it sounds like. Y'all know how this point I'm at. Uh, Wow, <laughs> that was y'all know by this point how much I love resolving to a major chord that then kind of falls to a minor chord. Major, minor. I I like it. And the next thing I added was these was these almost like it's like a pseudo pad. It's this is what it sounds like. I really like it. It's free and flex. I think it's called blue accordion or something. I use it a lot because I think it sounds pretty. So now it sounds like this. And then I've got this new section, which is same notes, just pitched higher. These blue accordion chords now are larger and are held for longer. So now you can kind of hear how they're more sustained. For some reason, this sound has always reminded me of like Celeste. Like this feels like you'd, it would be in Celeste, you know what I mean? Maybe. And then I just added this bass section to the second bit, which is the exact same instrument as I'm using for the chords, just way lower. And this is what it sounds like. Oh, we're building up to the next, the, the first ever build up that actually leads to something interesting. I'm so excited. And we use that reversed piano chord again, because I love that. Then the last component of this section is these hats. And I thought it would be funny to make them kind of like just barely present in the first bit as if they're kind of like trying to fight their way back into the track. So they like come in eventually every once in a while. I'm just imagining like every time the hats aren't play playing, it's like drowning. And then it like sticks its face up to breathe for a second and then goes back underwater. So it sounds like this. And now it has a little lifeboat. Because now we're back to regular until everything drops out for that little build up section right there. Okay, and now I wanna talk about something cool. Well, you know what, how about this? Instead, I'm just gonna play for you this whole next section, or at least this bit of it, and then we'll break it down. So first I wanna show you what it sounds like. Now, 
Now let's talk about it. So first of all, let me play these chords for you here. Same as last time, but now we're using a piano. Except you might notice something different. This one here, right here, was major, which would be, I think, this. I think it was this. Yes. Now we're going straight to major. Or now we're going straight to minor and then resolving to this new chord right here. And something that I actually am really proud of that I, that I figured out would be cool to do is earlier in the song, in this like kind of techie build up section, I could have left the bass like this so that in the second run through, it sounds like this. And then just stays on E. And then that would have had the same feel as, as when it was just these chords over here, which is major and then minor. But what I, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump these up to A. And it brings this new flavor because instead of it sounding like a pure minor chord, now it sounds like this all together. You, you hear that bass kind of introduces this new element to that chord. And that like, it's like a, it's like a trailer for where the, the resolution ends up in this section, because now A is the root note of this last bit, because it's this. And I thought that was really cool, because instead of it staying minor here, it like, it's a little different. And it like kind of teases that it's going to go to this new note over here. I thought it would be really cool to have just this complete genre flip and go from something really like 8-bitty and techy which has kind of been all, of, all over here. It's been a lot of really weird synthy instruments. But now I thought it would be cool to just kind of out of nowhere break into acoustic. It's not purely acoustic, but it's the piano is now the focus. And it hasn't really been that often in the song. It was really only in this earlier section, which by the way, this is so freaking scattered. Oh my God. This whole section right here that we covered, this only plays once. So congratulations, you are now an expert on the rarest part of this song. Uh, I communicated with the Stardew Roguelike team, uh, and they said, yes, it would be possible for me to export as two separate bits, because what I have in mind is that this whole intro section, ending with this, only plays once. And then this is where the loop point starts. So now whenever the song loops, it's gonna loop just back to here. So this is like an intro section that only plays once. And then this is the actual like real song. Well, real in quotations. It's all part of the song, but you get the point. But yeah, let's break down this section right here. And for the most part, so we have our four key components here, which is bass from the guitar, the synth making this kind of weird, more like harmonic, melodic, whatever bass, and then our kick and our snare. And this has kind of been a mainstay throughout this entire song. All the same instruments, nothing that new. It's the same deal. And then, of course, I got to bring these stupid claps back because they're funny. And these little hot dog slaps as well. So there's that. And they're all having a great time together. And then I added this section right here, which is just those bit crush xylophones from before. But now they're playing this pattern. And, and that's cool. So now it sounds like that all together. And then let's bring in our two piano elements, which is first of all, just these chords, which we already discussed. It sounds like a news thing. You know what I mean? It has that kind of rhythm to it. And that rhythm is really what defines this next section over here. But then this is, this is, the, this is the whole deal. This is basically the whole new section in one, and I, learned this, I know this looks like a lot, um, and that's because it is. Do y'all understand now why this took me so long? Because like, this kind of thing is something that could take someone who actually knows what they're doing with music, probably like two or three minutes. I don't know, just chords, man. Just copy paste, blah, blah, blah. Um, not for me. <laughs> it took me very long to figure out how to get something that I like. Because I, again, I don't own, this is something that people keep forgetting. I don't own like a MIDI keyboard. I only use my mouth. I only click notes in manually by like clicking them in and then changing the length. Like I don't play anything myself on the piano. So I can't experiment with chords that easily in real time because I, I can't really play like multiple notes at once. I have to click stuff in and then manually test it. So it takes a lot longer, but I really like this pattern. 
it kind of sounds like a piratey thing. And that's what I was going for because I figure, I don't know, he's a skeleton with attitude. When I think of that, I think of pirate. I've never watched One Piece, but my friend really likes One Piece and I think it's about pirates and I think there's a skeleton in that show. That's about all I've got though. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make conversation here. So this is what this pattern sounds like. And something that I really like is that when this is played in a vacuum, it kind of has like a one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. It like it has that rhythm to it. You know what I mean? Because of the way the rhythm is played, because there's some kind of syncopation. But then if you add the kick drums in, that's when I think this song is in six, eight. I don't remember how to tell what key signatures are, but I feel like this is six, eight, right? Because it's like it's like each each bar measure. There we go. Is like two sections of threes. It's like two section, sections of little triplets i think this would certainly indicate like this would i feel like this would kind of indicate that one two three four five six one two three four five six one two three four five six i think kind of sounds like it's like one two one two one two but then if you add in the kick it's like one two three one two three one two three so then it's like that's where the syncopation comes in because it's like kick kick butt kick butt 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 Like that so then i really like this section i think it sounds really cool and i think it's a it's a total like departure from this which sounds kind of thin and kind of all in the front of your head and then it really spreads out here i really like this part and this is the part that I struggled the most with by far. And it's because I had no idea what I wanted to do with it. I, I, I had a lot of experimentation with strings. I kind of wanted to get some strings going, either like a more energized like string run that was like or like really long string. I, I Okay, you see all these patterns over here? You see all these patterns? There are over 70 patterns over here that I've created. Probably about 20 of them. <laughs> are like actually being used you can see how scattered it is because right here you have 16 46 68 and 3 because like so many of the things i tried just like did not work out but yeah i really wanted these strings to work somewhere because i thought it would sound really epic but i could not get it to sound good no matter how hard i tried and it's just this section was this this one was probably the worst though i had no idea what to do with this bridge and it it was a struggle so then in this section we're just going to repeat everything literally repeat one to one except adding this which is xylophone and it's just the same notes that that other xylophone was playing up here these little like it's are these are i don't know how many notes thing has to be to be termed an arpeggio i know in a previous video i used the word arpeggio and then backtracked instantly and said, I'm probably using that wrong. I don't know. And someone in the comments was like, yeah, nice try. That's not an arpeggio. That's a scale. And then I looked it up. I was right. It was an arpeggio. And y'all are lying to me. Anyway, I don't know how many notes something has to be to be considered an arpeggio. If three is enough. But if it is, then that's what them are. And then I just repeated the like main melody down here. I like that note. I like this right here. And it doesn't make it sound too different, but you can kind of notice it. I think it layers really nicely with everything. It kind of accentuates that lead. And then we're almost done because then we're just gonna fade out and we're gonna repeat these two. Just the piano and the and the xylophone. But then I, I feel like this is the most iconic part of the song, this instrument, so I had to include this in the end bit. So then this is our ending. And then it's gonna... And that's gonna be our loop point. We have our reverse piano chord, we have our white noise riser, and let's check if it loops well, shall we? So as I said, our loop point is right here, not anything before this. All of this section is only gonna happen once. So our loop point actually sounds like this. Nice. And that's it. That's the 
song. This one was impossible for me, and I'm still not fully pleased. It still doesn't feel right. But you know what? All that matters is that we had fun, we did our best, and thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate it. And I'm going to go ahead and play it for you uh, once all the way through. So stick around if you want to hear that. But I'll get it on Spotify eventually. It takes forever, y'all. It's They have to like double check everything to make sure I'm not just like farting into the mic and then uploading it to Spotify. So I'll, I'll let y'all know in the community tab once it goes up. But until then, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the tunes.